mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit too. Our sermon text for today is taken from our Old Testament reading from the book of Ruth. A while ago I was going through a children's Bible with some of the children at the preschool in Brookings. And after speaking with them for a while, one of the little girls asked why there were so few women in the stories. There are lots of stories of David and Samuel and Solomon and all the things that they did, but why were there so few women? There was only one woman that we talked about that year, and that was Ruth. She is only one, but there are many other women of faith in the scriptures. The Bible says that God did not create man and woman as identical twins, but as complements for one another. The woman to give birth and, birth and nurse to the children, the man to care for and protect his family in their times of need. However, God did not create the woman to be inferior to the man in respect to character or spiritual state. God created both man and woman in his image. So, in the Old Testament, we find faithful, wise, and courageous women, like Sarah, Abraham's wife, Deborah, the judge of Israel, and Queen Esther. In the New Testament, we have Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary and Martha of Bethany, and Phoebe, and even more. Our text is the first chapter in the story of another woman, Ruth. Another theme is repeated in the scriptures, is that people have had to leave their country, and how God has cared for and protected all those who trusted for him, even while they were away. That seems like a relevant issue for us today, when each of us has family members who are now living far away, and each of us who have moved, we want to know that God is taking care of those people who have left us. But the book of Ruth is perhaps the only book in the Bible written entirely from the perspective of women. It is important to understand that at the time, the only social security for women was their families. A woman depended on her husband, children and grandchildren to take care of herself in her old age. Therefore, for Naomi to lose her husband and her two sons without grandchildren was a total disaster. We read, And the two also died, Malon and Kilian, having, ha, <clears throat> leaving the woman bereft of her sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law and returned from the fields of Moab, because she heard in the fields of Moab that Yahweh had visited his people and given them bread. So she left the place from where she had been, and with her two daughters-in-law, they began to walk to return to the land of Judah. Her two daughters-in-law wanted to come with her, but finally she said to them, Go return each of you to your mother's house, and may God treat you with mercy as you have done to the dead and to me. May God grant that you find rest each in the house of a husband. And she kissed them, and they all raised their voices and cried. And they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. And Naomi answered, Turn back, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Do I have more children in my womb who can be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, and be gone, for I am too old to have a husband. And even if I said I have hope and was tonight with a husband and still gave birth to children, would you wait for them until they were grown? Would you remain unmarried for their sake? No, my daughters, I have greater bitterness than you, for the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. This was a fork in the road for Ruth and Orpah. One of them chose the easy route and returned back to her village. The other, Ruth, said this, Do not beg me to leave you, to turn away from you, because wherever you will go, I will go, and wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. So may God do to me, and may he do even more than this, that only death will make a separation between you and me. Now the rest of this story reads like a romance novel. They arrive in Bethlehem at the beginning of the harvest of barley and wheat. To care for her mother-in-law, Ruth picked up the ears that fell to the ground behind the reapers. She worked all day because she did not have a husband or children, but only her mother-in-law to take care of. 
She captured the attention of a man named Boaz, the owner of the field, who asked his workers, who is this young woman? And he said to Ruth, do not go into another field, and when you are thirsty, you may share the water of my workers. Later, Boaz invited her to share the food of his workers and gave the workers <coughs> and instructed the workers to leave more ears and grain in the field for Ruth. In the beginning, Ruth did not understand why Boaz was giving her favors, but Naomi understood and told Ruth to approach Boaz. The two fell in love and were married after some challenges. What a beautiful story of love and loyalty. But without miracles, without kings or warriors, without spectacle, it has great significance in the context of the scriptures. That city they were from was Bethlehem, and Obed, the son of Boaz and Ruth, was the grandfather of David, the great king of Israel, and his descendant was Jesus Christ. God not only blessed Naomi and Ruth with children and grandchildren, but also all nations through these women. There is another thing that is important to understand. Ruth was incorporated into the people of God in the lineage of Jesus Christ by her confession of faith. When she said, your people will be my people and your God will be my God, she became one of God's people. Today the people of God is the church because through Jesus Christ we are heirs of Abraham and David and we are in that same family line. We have the eternal promise of life in our baptisms. It is a blessing to grow up in a Christian family, but that is not necessary to receive the gift of faith in baptism. Someone can be baptized in their adult life, and their past life no longer matters. However, <clears throat> baptism can be a fork in the road for everyone. St. Paul says so in Romans chapter 6. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Because we are buried with him in death by baptism, so that as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. We are saved for that new life, and now we live as children of God. We have to leave the country of our birth, which is the rebellion and anger against God that is our inheritance of Adam and Eve for the promised land of forgiveness and obedience. We can walk in the light or in the darkness, but not in both. This new life and our journey to that eternal life begins in our baptism. But because of our sinful nature, which lasts until our physical death, we will always fall into sin. But God offers forgiveness in confession, absolution, and holy communion. But like, <clears throat> but like the Holy Supper, like baptism, our Lord says in the Gospel of Matthew, But I say to you that anyone who without reason will be angry with his brother will be in danger of judgment. And anyone who says to his brother, Raka, will be in danger with the council. And whoever says to him, Fool, will be exposed to the fires of hell. Therefore, if you bring your offering to the altar, <clears throat> if, therefore, if you bring your offering to the altar, and there you remember that your brother has sinned against you, leave your offering before the altar, and go and be reconciled first with your brother. Our altar today is not that old altar of thanksgiving. It is also the, body, the altar of the body and blood of Christ. We should not approach the Lord's table with anger against the brother in our heart. The same with the desires of the flesh. Repentance is not just a formula, but a change of mind and of heart and of life, the same way that Ruth changed her life to follow Naomi to be with God in Israel. In this change of heart and mind, then, this new life begins that, that begins with our baptism. We have a hope and peace that passes all understanding. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.